Hey, what's up, chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be doing a review of the 2024 Wired Freedom. I've had this bike for a couple months now and ridden it a decent amount, about 160 miles. Unfortunately, it's been raining quite a bit this year, so I haven't ridden as much as I'd like to. I do feel like I've ridden this enough to give you a comprehensive review, tell you some of the things I absolutely love about this bike, and some of the things I'm not so crazy about. Guys, you're absolutely not going to want to miss this one. But before you do anything else in your life, I need you to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Here it is, guys, the 2024 Wired Freedom. And the first thing I noticed when I took this thing out of the box, this paint job just looks leaps and bounds better than the paint job that's on my 2023 Wired Cruiser. Granted, I have significantly more miles on the Cruiser. You can see here, there are a lot of scratches on the lower portion of this bike. This paint job is just nowhere near as good of quality as the one on the Freedom. You can see the paint on the Freedom is a nice glossy finish on it. This to me feels more like a paint job you'd expect to see on a car. This feels very nice. Some key differences between the 2024 model and the 2023. 2024 has metal fenders. 2023 has plastic. I actually kind of prefer the plastic fenders because these are quiet. These don't make much noise. If you hear the metal ones banging around, they make a significant amount of noise. Not gonna be an issue to me because I do in fact plan on taking off the fenders. All of the 2024 models come with an RST guide front fork, which is way better than the fork that comes on the 2023 Cruiser. As a matter of fact, I don't even see a brand name on the fork on the 2023 Cruiser, which lets you know, even the people that made this fork, they're like, hey, we'll sell it to you, but we don't want our brand name on it. Let me just show you one reason why the, the fork is much better on this new model. If I push forward on the bike, you'll see that the fork is actually pushing forward. There's a significant amount of slop or slack in this fork where it's pushing forward against the fork instead of pushing down in the suspension. Now we're gonna do the same test on the Freedom. I'm holding the front brakes. When I'm pushing forward, you notice the bike immediately starts to go into the suspension. The 2023 models used a 52 tooth front chain ring. The 2024 model, 56 tooth front chain ring. Okay, now I know what you guys are probably thinking. Hey, how'd you get a white Freedom? I don't see that listed on their website. Well guys, I'm glad you asked. All you have to do is click your heels together three times, and then using your player two controller, you're gonna simply press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start, and that will unlock the Wired Freedom. Wired's really made a name for themselves because they set the bar for this style of e-bike. This is a 60 volt system. Typical e-bikes in this segment of the market with the hub driven motors, they're gonna be 48 to 52 volt, 1500 watt Hintock motor, and this 2023 model had a 1200 watt motor as this one has special windings to do something or other. Honestly, riding both of these bikes, I couldn't tell you a single difference. The best part about these motors is they have a hybrid gears, makes it significantly stronger. Typical e-bikes have nylon gears, which makes for a quiet ride, but they're more prone to failure. This is a significantly stronger setup. How many watts can a 60 by 40 amp controller put out? So if you times the two together, 60 times 40, that'll give you your answer. This can put out 2,400 watts. Another e-bike I recently reviewed, a 48 volt system, that could put out a total of about 1,300 watts. So this bike puts out 1,000 watts more than a lot of the competitors. This has a 60 volt, 20 amp hour battery. And what that means, this is a 1,200 watt hour battery. That means this battery can sustain a load of 1,200 watts for one hour. As far as e-bike terms go, this is a, on, the ver on the large side of battery capacities. This is a 26 by four inch fat tire. This one comes with the Kenda Crusade tires. This bike is equipped with Tektro hydraulic disc brakes front and rear with 180 millimeter rotors. It has a seven speed turny derailleur. I uh, do not like this derailleur one bit. However, if you look around, almost every single e-bike that's a seven speed has the same exact derailleur. This may seem like a minor detail, but the pedals that come on this bike, these are Wilgo pedals. These are perfectly fine pedals. Look at the pedals that came on the 2023 Cruiser. Aren't these hideous? I was probably going to get beat up if I got caught out on the bike trails with these pedals. One of the biggest selling points of the 2024 Freedom is the fact that it's a full suspension bike. All the end links on the suspension here look like they're very high quality. The rear DNM shock offers a couple of uh, adjustments. Port to add more air pressure. This is your compression and then there's your rebound. You guys really need to set up this shock before you go out and ride your bike if you want to get the most out of it. The RST guide front fork offers a couple adjustments here. You have your 
rebound and compression. This bike comes equipped with this nice sturdy rear rack. One thing I don't find with the design of this rack is I do plan on taking it off and unfortunately there's no mounting provisions for the fender or this tail light. So if you remove the rack, you're going to have to remove the fender and tail light as well. Nice soft seat wire branded. The one on the cruiser, I was going to change it immediately, but as I rode it, I realized, you know, the seat was good enough for me, so I ended up leaving it. And one of my absolute favorite things about the wired bikes are these BMX handlebars. I don't know what it is. I just absolutely love the BMX bars. This display gives you all the same information the previous model did. It gives you your pedal assist level one through five. It has your battery meter here, but more importantly, I really like that this gives you the voltage. The voltage is gonna be more accurate than the bar system is by far. Power output there, so if you are pedaling, it shows you how much power you're outputting. Temperature, this is ambient temperature. New for 2024 models, there is a motor temperature. I like the grips here, it's got these nice palm support areas. It's got a half twist throttle. The same Shimano shifter here, the seven speed. I used to absolutely hate this shifter. However, it's kind of grown on me. I still just think it's really ugly. I don't know if somebody over at Wired's playing a cruel joke or they just wanted to see if they could torture the people who bought these bikes, but the mounting bracket on this headlight is just absolutely terrible. This is unconstitutional, Wired. Whoever did this should be put in prison for a long time. So now we've gone over all the features of this bike. What do you say we go do the fun part and take it out for a test drive? Yeah, come on guys, let's go. Oh shit. All right, guys, the main part of the reason you're probably watching this video is because this is the freedom. You want to see the full suspension in action. And you know what? Well, this may not be a typical use case scenario. Let's see how this does on this old railroad tracks here. <laughs> I did this on my cruiser, and uh, it was a significantly less enjoyable experience. Uh, however, I still would not do this normally. <laughs> Oh, much better, guys. So, if you've ever wondered how your wired freedom would do on some railroad tracks, here you go. I would definitely not recommend riding over railroad tracks, but I uh, just wanted to show you guys the suspension in action. So I believe you need to set your expectations for a bike like this. Don't go into this thinking this is gonna be comparable to a full suspension mid-drive mountain bike, because it's not. This does have full suspension, but it doesn't have as much travel and to me, this is more geared towards riding on paths like this or some more rough terrain. But this bike is too heavy and you're definitely not gonna wanna take this on some any, any hardcore off-roading. As the name of this bike implies, the Wired Freedom, I think that perfectly describes what this bike is. This bike gives you the freedom to conquer all sorts of terrain. So we'll eat up asphalt, we'll eat up gravel, dirt roads, sand, you name it. So far, I've been pleasantly surprised with the performance of this rear suspension. Now, I never heard of the brand name DNF before, so my expectations were very low. However, once I set up the shock, it responds very well, and uh, the rebound and compression settings are, make a very noticeable difference when you adjust the knobs. So one of the things, this bike is equipped with metal fenders, and it hasn't bothered me yet, but I've heard people point out that these fenders are noisy. Yes, and it's true. You'll hear rocks and various things bang against them, and they come out of alignment very easy. So I'm actually planning, I'm going to be taking the fenders off of this bike. I like the way it looks with the fenders. Yeah, I just don't need them. This is a very big bike. This is something you might not notice if you only seen pictures of these, but look, I'm 6'2", and check out getting on this bike. I have to step up pretty high. And can you imagine if I had a pannier bag on there or a bag on the back? Wired states that this bike will fit someone from 5'4 to 6'5, which to me, if you're under, if you're 5'4, yeah, I'm sure you can get on this bike, but you're not going to be having a great time getting on and off of it. You can see here, here's the lovely front headlight I was telling you about. I didn't do this. This is just the natural riding will bend this out of alignment. One of my favorite things about this bike, though, is the way it looks. I mean, can you see that? This is a really nice looking bike. The only thing I wanted to point out, if you saw my 1,000 mile update video on the Cruiser, you'll notice that I said the front end was very prone to shaking on that bike, back and forth. And it's especially noticeable after about 20 miles an hour, you couldn't ride that bike with no hands. That is not an issue on this bike at all. 
And I believe that to be to the fact that this is rear suspension. And when you sit onto the suspension, it's slackening the front head tube angle and it's uh, remedying that problem altogether. So this bike does not have a, front, a shaky front at all. It's a much more stable ride. You can see that. You know, I have to really try and shake it and it's not wanting to wobble around at all. The fat tires work much better going back and forth over obstacles like this. Where sometimes if you have a, a skinnier tire and if you're trying to go over like a little bump in the sidewalk, it'll grab the tire and it won't let you go through. The fat tires let you just go right over things. Wired kind of set the bar for this style of e-bike and that's true. These are 60 volt systems and they're touted as 40 mile an hour e-bikes. Well, honestly, yes, you can do 40 on one of these bikes, but it's not the easy, you gotta, you have to really wanna do 40. Well, I think these bikes are great. They are good for being all around bikes. You can use it for a commuter bike. This bike is fast enough to keep up with traffic on moderate speed limit streets up to about 30, 35. But I'm gonna go ahead and say something maybe, maybe you think is controversial here. Well, yes, this bike can go 30, 35, 40. I think these bikes are best suited to be cruising right around 25 miles an hour. Because, you know, when I first got this bike, I was riding like a maniac all the time. Let's not forget, guys, this is an e-bike, e-bicycle. You ride this bike like a bicycle, but you're doing 30, 35 miles an hour, you're going to get yourself in a world of hurt very fast. You can goof off on a bicycle at 12 to 15 miles an hour and not have to worry about getting hit by cars or getting yourself in the situations you can get yourself into when you're doing 30 or 35. So in my opinion, well, yeah, everyone seems to be wanting to go faster and faster and faster on these bikes. For a bike like this style, the way that most people will probably end up riding this bike, this bike is plenty fast enough. Because, uh, it, once you're going to start going 35, 40, 45 and over, you really need to start riding this bike like it's a motorcycle and start obeying the laws of traffic and not goofing off, running up and down curbs and doing all that sorts of stuff. So that's my piece there. Just be safe, guys. I've got myself in a few hairy situations already. I had to adjust the way I ride. You get caught up in the specs and you're going to want to go faster and faster and faster and you realize like, hey, it's really not a... You don't really need to be riding around 40 miles an hour on the sidewalks and stuff, you know? Woo. This is the nice bridge between a motorcycle and a bike. Example of why I like the Freedom so much. You could go on the boring bike trail here or you can just zip up and you can go off road. That's exactly what I'm gonna do here. So you're gonna find yourself going all over the place on these bikes. Especially on a Freedom with a full suspension, you're not going to have to worry about terrorizing your back. These bikes are like little monster trucks. I mean, look at this. I'm just riding right through the grass. This is one section I noticed when I was riding my Cruiser that the hardtail was definitely a limitation. And I was coming down this stretch right here and you could just hear the thing banging all around. Granted, it is wet out now and it's softer. But you can just tell, this eats up these little bumps way better. Controversial point, but I believe gearing is too steep on this bike. Now, on the Wired Facebook group, there seems to be a competition who can put the biggest chain ring on the front of their bikes. So this bike comes with a 56 tooth front chain ring, and I've seen people go as high as 75. With people looking, they'll go even higher than that. I don't understand what the point of that is, because, you know, these bikes will only do about 40 something miles an hour regardless. But nevertheless, people seem to want to put bigger and bigger chain rings on their bike. All right, so let me state my case for why I think this bike is geared too steep. You get riding, you go, you're going around 25 miles an hour, you get to a stop and you want to start pedaling again. You realize like, hey, I'm in a really steep gear right now. And man, I'm putting all my weight on this bike. And the cadence sensor, you see how long it took for the cadence sensor to kick in there? So there's a significant delay. It's like you're starting off a car from a dead stop, but you're in fourth gear. Now, I know some of you are going to say, and I do this a lot too, but you can just use the throttle to get going from a stop. Yes, that is the case, but honestly, I would like to see a solution where you can get on this bike and start pedaling right away, and it's just a smooth transition back into power without having to use the throttle, or the, you know, which I kind of deem a, a band-aid approach. And another problem is, when you're going up a steep hill, you can't get this thing geared low enough where you can actually pedal at an RPM such as this. 
where I know the majority of the power from this bike is going to come from the motor, not from your legs. But when you're trying to go up a hill and you're pedaling, at, you know, super slow, you can't get yourself in a meaningful enough cadence to help get the bike up the hill. So I would like to see this bike have a v bigger granny gear. I'll be willing to admit that maybe it's just me, maybe I'm the outlier, because see, people on the Facebook page seem to want to go higher and higher and higher with the chain rings. I'm going to go the opposite direction. I actually ordered a 46 tooth front chain ring, do some testing with it and see how I like it. And this bike is listed as having an 11 by 34 rear cassette. However, I'm 90% sure this bike is equipped with an 11 by 28. So I ordered an 11 by 34. I'm going to be putting on that with the 46 tooth front chain ring, and I'm going to be testing that and see how I like it. So this bike is equipped with the same Tektro hydraulic brakes that they've had on the previous model. Let's go ahead and see how the well those do. Oh yeah, this bike has plenty of stopping power. I don't know what grade this hill is because uh, you know I'm not a dork, but this is a fairly steep hill. I'm gonna try and go up it in pedal assist three. I'm in the lowest gear right now. Let's see how it does. Hello. You can see it's already struggling and this goes back to my, this thing is geared too high. So I'm gonna pop it in four. Uh, it's doing a little better in four, but honestly, the, the steep as this thing is geared, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in five. And, oh yeah, five has no problem at all. I know this will go up in the throttle as well. Look at this guy on his regular bike. And I'm just in really good shape, sir. He's probably mad at me now. I better get away from him. So I don't want to harp on the gearing too much, but it'd be nice if uh, I could go up a hill like that on pedal assist three, rather than having to rely on cranking this thing up to full power because I can't help it at all with my own legs. Okay, so I've said my piece, guys. And I'm willing to admit that possibly it's just me and everyone else wants their bike geared as ridiculously steep as possible. It just eats up these rough trails like this, no problem. Oh, let's take the uh, detour here, what do you say? If this is your idea of riding, if this is what you want to do, this is the type of sort of thing you want to do, then this bike is absolutely perfect for you. This is a great use case scenario for this bike. Let's see if we can climb this little hill here, go to this outlook up here. Probably need to get a head start here. This is really steep, it's something the camera is definitely not going to pick up. Ooh, even, on, even with throttle, it's not having too fun of a time. But we made it guys, check it out, and here's the reward. Do you like doing stuff like this on your bike? And then, you know what? I think you'll enjoy a wired freedom. Check out that view. Another thing I've noticed is the bottom bracket on this bike is way too low, making the Freedom very prone to pedal strikes. Let me see if I can demonstrate what I mean. Typically I'll get pedal strikes on my mountain bike when I'm riding over obstacles or anything. With this one, I've gotten pedal strikes on corners. So just pedaling through a corner, you can see, can you hear that? you're gonna end up hitting the pedals more than you'd like. So I don't know how they need to remedy that, but it's pretty annoying. I've already scraped down a good, I've already shaved off a couple of grams off of my pedals. And it's pretty alarming when you're going fast and you're going around a corner and you hear that scraping noise. So I don't know, I haven't heard anyone else mention that yet, but yes, this bike is very prone to pedal strikes. Here, let me hear the song of my people. Be a close up of the pedal here and you can see where it's already grinding down from rubbing against the asphalt on corners. It's another reason why I wouldn't recommend this bike for real off-road riding, but it's great for fire roads and things like that. I'm sure if you've looked around at these bikes, you've noticed that they always say 40 mile an hour e-bike. Well, let's see if this thing can actually hit 40. What do you say? I'm gonna pedal assist five now, even using the throttle here. Pedaling uh, very hard. Ah. Woo. 
All right, I think I got it to 36 there, guys. So, you know, while they claim this is a 40 mile an hour e-bike, getting it to 40 is not as easy as they say it is. I've gotten my cruiser to 40 multiple times, but so far I have not been able to get the freedom to 40 without using gravity, that is. You know what was in my mind going around that corner? That's right, who guessed pedal strikes? It's the last thing you wanna do is get a pedal strike when you're going 30, 35 miles an hour. It's another section where I really noticed the, having the full suspension is when I come up and down these little curbs here on the cruiser, it would just really bounce me out of my seat coming back up the ramp right there, but not on this bike. Coming up here, this is the type of terrain I think the Wired Freedom is perfect for. You like to goof around, like go off road, set your own path and check this out. Let's just do that right now. Woo. Do some trailblazing on your Wired Freedom. Okay, that was a bit scary, guys. I'm not gonna lie. Another cool feature of having a bike like this is you get to experience all the unique and beautiful graffiti that your town has to offer. Well, with this bike having a 1200 watt hour battery, I'm gonna give you an example of what kind of range to expect because I've actually done a range test on it already. Using pedal assist three and throttle, I got a range of about 34 miles. I think that's pretty typical of what you can expect. I do have Tannis tire armor in my tires, so I believe that's gonna eat up some of your range. I'm gonna do a future test without the armor in there and see if it changes. But I think you can realistically expect to get a range of about 40 miles on this bike, which is pretty good. Most people, uh, most people get to be done with riding around the 20 mile mark. I'm not most people, I like to go on longer rides, but this bike has adequate range is what I'm trying to say, okay? I almost forgot to point out my favorite part of this bike. It has a bell now. Coming through. It's nothing like hitting this bell when you come up on people doing 30 miles an hour to give them the scare of their lifetime. YouTuber coming through. Oh, and you think that's the end of this bell? Look at this. It is 360 degree adjustable here. You can adjust where you want the little clicker at. How cool is that? I'd say it's worth buying this bike just for the bell. And we're back. Guys, just so there's full disclosure on this channel, Wired did in fact send me this bike, but it was after I paid full price for it, just like anyone else would have. Let's give you a recap of things I really like about this bike. First off, it's a really nice looking bike. Almost every single time I ride, people are always making comments about it like, hey, watch where you're going. Get off my property, you know. Has a class leading 60 volt system that's put wired on the map. 1500 watt Hentock motor with the hybrid nylon steel gears. The 60 volt 40 amp controller capable of putting out 2400 watts and a 1200 watt hour battery. I love the BMX bars. The rear shock, although it's a brand I never heard of before, operates very well, especially once I dialed it in. But yes, the, the suspension on this bike has exceeded my expectations. It's a very nice ride. And Wired has great customer service, which brings me into some of the things I'm not too fond of. Number one is, when I first received this bike, the front steer tube was bent in shipping. First rode the bike, it was pulling to the left. Wired was great, I emailed them and they sent me out a new fork, but it kind of sucks when you get a brand new bike and you have to wait a week and a half for a replacement. I really hope Wired can address the shipping situation. So that's how we have it when you show, get your new bike, you don't have to worry about it being damaged. You might not be able to notice from this video, but this bike is very big. Look at the size comparison between the Wired Freedom and this Aventon here. Granted, the Aventon is a smaller frame, but you'll notice here the handlebars go up to where the stem of the Wired are at. So this bike is very big. The benefit of a big bike is, yes, it's bigger, wider, longer wheelbase, and it's more stable. Negatives are, this bike's very heavy. Even for me, it's like getting on and off of this bike can sometimes be a challenge. So. If you're a smaller rider or if you have mobility issues, I'd almost universally recommend pick up the Cruiser instead because you're going to have a lot easier time getting on and off that bike. If you're transporting your bike, you're going to have to figure out a way to get it on and off a bike rack. I put this bike in the bed of my truck and lifting this bike, and I'm, I'd have to say I'm above average strength level.
lightweight. When I pick up this bike, it's just big and awkward. You can't really get a good handle on it, so putting it into the back of the truck is not very easy to do. The way the Cruiser, the Cruiser is a heavy bike, but the way the frame is built on the Cruiser, it's much easier to grab and move around. So I live on a second story in an apartment, and I have to bring this bike up and down the stairs every time. Uh, I'm telling you, it's not very fun. The front headlight, I don't even want to look at it right now. It's almost kind of a joke how bad it is. I would love to see a bike like this with a smaller frame, same drivetrain, same battery, same everything, but about 20 pounds lighter, smaller, and with a 24 by four inch fat tire. And I know this would increase the price, but I'd love to see how one of these bikes performs with an 11 speed cassette in the rear. This is a, definitely a step in the right direction. This bike is great and you're gonna have a lot of fun on it if you decide to get one. And however, if you are looking at buying a wired bike, feel free to use one of the links in the description of this video. It does help support the channel. If you like this video, uh, click the, the thumbs up button and uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to live unrestricted. I'll catch you in the next video.